If the gorilla has an identity and a wallet and some Kudogo funds mm -hmm. in the wallet, mm -hmm. what is the point? Yeah. What is the point? Yes. And how do, does it even <laughs> use it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. For lack of a better word, probably some sort of incentive um, uh, for coexisting with, with nature. You are perfect, Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> Artificial intelligence allows us to take all the knowledge yeah. and information we have on the gorillas mm. and help us humans to determine simple interests mm. that the animals have. The president, mm. the idea of drone delivery yes. of medicine yes. and yes. blood. And I remember very vividly the first conversation I had uh, with His Excellency uh, in the Davos World Economic Forum. He said, oh, you know, I thought drones were a military thing, yeah, yeah. dropping things. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, it's true, but they also can be doing other stuff. Yeah. Jonathan, thank you so much for making time and thank you for accepting to uh, speak to us on such a day that I'm uh, very, very aware that uh, it's been a long one. You've been at the mountains, you've uh, seen the baby gorilla that you named in the past Kwitizina. It must have been a very jam-packed day for you. Yeah, but um, who can complain with a, with a day like that? I mean, it's an <laughs> incredible privilege to be able to go up the volcano. Yeah spend time every month with this family of gorillas yeah and uh, it's true it was a, a little bit wet yeah. on the volcano <laughs> we got the rainy season now yeah, yeah. but it was beautiful right. as always you know. for someone who's never had a chance to actually experience um uh, you know their gorilla uh, trekking uh, 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 what what are the things that you feel they are really missing out on first of all before we get into the conversation of the day I think you get a perspective of what you are as a homo sapien, as a human. Mm -hmm. And uh, just as an African meeting a Nigerian, a Kenyan, a Nigerian, you say, oh, yeah, we're African together. But when you're with a gorilla, you really feel uh, a sense of relationship. Mm -hmm. And also, the animals, they are very gentle, mm. very gentle, mm. very, very, very kind. And so I think there is a, and I think almost anyone who is lucky enough to spend time with the animals, it's a very special, I would say even a spiritual experience for some people. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's quite interesting because um, uh, I was telling you earlier on before we even started this conversation that one of the things that uh, is now very seriously on my bucket list is actually gorilla trekking. And, and it's something that uh, we are hoping that, uh, God willing, 2025, as we start the new year, or even maybe before we even close uh, 2024, is something that uh, I should be able to do. Um, uh, any quick tips, maybe? <laughs> I, I, th I think, you know, just pick the right season to go. Uh -huh. Really uh, prepare yourself to just have some time and, and think about what you're doing. Because if we pull out of Rwanda, we pull out of East Africa, mm. you say there are 8 billion humans on planet Earth. Mm. And gorilla is a, along with chimpanzee, is our closest relative. Yeah. And only 1,000 of them. Yeah. Not even a tiny bit of a tiny neighborhood in Nairobi. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, the privilege that you have living here in Rwanda uh, to to access something, it doesn't matter where you're from, right. from China, right. from Brazil or America or wherever you're from, it is something of global significance. Right, I like that. And I think that's, that's very challenging, especially for us who are here. Sometimes we often take a lot of things for granted. Um, but uh, I want us to talk a bit about something that is very dear to your heart. And of course, you've alluded to that already. And 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 uh, maybe just to be specific on the interspecies mining, it's it's a groundbreaking um, uh, you know concept. Uh, and 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 for someone who probably is hearing this for the first time, and those people have, have, have followed in your footsteps, in the work you do through different journals, 
and they want to understand the concept behind it, the inspiration behind it. Maybe take us, uh, you know, into that moment where you sat and said, this is, this is what I want to work on as a co-founder. You know, uh, I, I'm very lucky over the last years um, to uh, travel across Africa and other emerging mm -hmm. economies. And I had uh, an experience a few years ago in South Sudan. I was in the village, and in the village they were cutting down with axes, no electricity, very poor, a lot of hunger, mm. disease. Um, they were cutting down a 300-year-old, I guess 300, maybe 400, maybe 500-year-old tree, mm. but a very old tree mm. with cheap, simple, homemade axes mm. to make into charcoal. Mm -hmm. And I was watching this. And then not, uh, of course, not, none of us, not me, no, no one judging the community because the community is trying to survive. Yeah. But I was thinking this tree holding monkeys, holding birds, holding bats, holding insects, microbial life, mycelial life, yeah. and the mother tree yeah. herself. Yeah. yeah. All that history, you know, all that beauty. Taking down. And what, for $100, $200 worth of charcoal, you know? And in my mind, thinking through simple economics, I'm guessing the tree is worth three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars alive, mm, mm, mm. but with no ability for the tree to represent itself, itself mm. as a living thing mm. in our economy. The same with an animal, mm, no? Mm. It can only represent itself as the sum total of its processed body parts. Yeah, and uh, this really got me thinking. So I started to write about it. Then I did some more serious thinking on it. And then I involved some AI scientists and worked with a lot of uh, experts in artificial intelligence. Mm. And then we realized actually, you know what? This is a real idea, you know? Maybe, the, maybe it's not just humans that get to hold and spend money. Mm. Maybe some other species in some situations can hold and spend money. Mm. And I think here in the Rwandan or East African context, yes. if we want to explain it very simply, let's say, okay, imagine that tree that I just mentioned. Yeah. Imagine the tree had some Momo money, mm -hmm. some Mpesa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we know that Mpesa can get to the village can get even to the drunk, poor guy in the village. Yeah, yeah. Can get to a child who uh, wants to buy uh, some uh, beans for lunch. Mm, mm, you know? Mm, we know that. Mm. This is normal. But why can it not be pushed a little bit further to other species? Mm -hmm. And if you can do that in a trusted, reliable way, um, is it possible for the species to say, hey, I'm here, mm -hmm. I exist, I would love to exist a little bit longer, mm. and, you know, Asante Sana, mm. I, I, I reward you for helping me to continue to exist. Yeah. So, for me, it's about connect, trying to create a, a connection between the often very poor community and often very struggling species. Mm -hmm. And then the cycle continues. The cycle continues. And, and, and you mentioned a very interesting thing, and, and, and it's the aspect of technology, it's the aspect of AI. And I want us to talk a bit about the intersection or, um, uh, you know, of AI and conservation. Um, I know AI right now is, is, is what many people are talking about, uh, but specifically to this particular specific issue, I know Rwanda uh, has, has deployed this particular, uh, 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 you know, uh, technology. And, and what you're doing right now. And, and I want to understand, for that person who's just hearing you and, and is wondering uh, from a layman's perspective, how does it um, interconnect with conservation from a very practical perspective? Yeah, I think from, a, from an interspecies money approach, yes. what we are trying to do in this Tehanu group is um, 
can you give uh, an identity, a digital identity mm -hmm. to a non-human life form? Mm -hmm. In this case, in our first project was with the mountain gorillas. Mm -hmm. So if we take the example of a gorilla and say, how does this gorilla get a bank account? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, we need to know that he or she exists and she exists over time in a place. Mm -hmm. So the artificial intelligence allowed us to do that by creating a face recognition uh, software mm -hmm. for the mountain gorilla. Mm -hmm. Because every mountain gorilla, and your viewers can can check this, yes. get online and yeah. check it, yeah. and you see from the uh, nostril yeah. to the eyebrow, yeah. a mountain gorilla has a, what they call a nose print, mm -hmm. which is very much like a like thumbprint. Like a fingerprint or thumbprint. Like a thumbprint, yeah. Yeah, a fingerprint. Mm. And that's a unique signifier. Identifier, yeah. So the AI system can identify that and then say, oh, this gorilla exists. And you know, it, it doesn't have to happen weekly or monthly, mm -hmm. or maybe it's just twice a year. Mm -hmm. But that is enough to allow uh, the gorilla to hold some money. Mm -hmm. And now the bigger question is, if the gorilla has an identity and a wallet, and some Kidogo funds mm -hmm. in the wallet, mm -hmm. what is the point? Yeah. What is the point? Yes. And how do, does it even <laughs> use it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So then artificial intelligence allows us to take all the knowledge yeah. and information we have on the gorillas mm. and help us humans to determine simple interests mm. that the animals have. Like, I would like some more veterinary care. I would like you to remove the poacher's snare. Mm -hmm. I would like, if I leave the forest and go into a field and yes. there are some young women working in the field, I would like you to pay those young women so they don't lose their daily wage mm -hmm. because of me. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So these are, you have to uh, uh, think like there are simple, Interests, and here we are talking about simple interests, yeah. not sophisticated interests. Mm -hmm. not, they are not deciding to buy a house. <laughs> you know, they are not uh, going into a clothes store mm. and picking out yeah. one brand of jeans or another. No, they are saying, I need a little bit more security, a little bit more space, a little bit more medical attention. Uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe help me in the event of climate change. Maybe yeah. help take this invasive species out mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. and that's the basic principle uh, that we return to mm -hmm. so was, you're asking uh, agents in the community to provide a simple task and then get a micro payment for that task that they, that they deliver yeah so it is for lack of a better word probably some sort of incentive um, uh, for coexisting with, with nature. You are perfect, Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, my friend. I hear you. You're gonna, I hear you got it exactly right. It <laughs> is about um, negotiating yeah. coexistence. Yeah. Because, of course, there are some species that are living in very protected areas. I hear you. Yeah. And there are some species which are in cities and it's hard for them in a the city. Yeah. But on this front line, at the village level, and here we can think in Rwanda very specifically, mm, mm. in the poor districts of the country, mm. you know, it's really hard if you're not a human to say, hey, uh, you know, I know it's a small country, mm. I know you guys are struggling with the farming, but hey, I wouldn't mind a little bit of space for myself. Correct. So this is about that long-term negotiation. And if we think about a vision for Rwanda or East Africa, then you're saying, as the economy grows, as Rwandans get richer and more educated, and yeah. this is the same for Kenya mm, and Tanzania mm, mm, and so on, mm. uh, in, in India as well, as the economy grows, is it possible for the interests of other species also... Yeah, to also to, thrive. To thrive, grow. yeah. Together. You know? I, I hear you. Uh, so, there, this is no longer a vision. This is something that is already happening. Yes. And I'd like you to just talk to our viewers um, on, on the stage that we are at at the moment in terms of impl implementation 
of this great groundbreaking ambition? No, it depends on your personality usually. <laughs> yeah. you know? If you are a grounded person, you would say, hey, it's a small achievement to hit the first step. You, some non-human, these gorillas made some simple payments across the species divide. Mm -hmm. And there are many things to be proven. We don't know what scale it will go to if you're a grounded person. Mm -hmm. Me, I would say, yes, it's a first step, but it is very historic. Yes, yes. Here in Rwanda, the first time anywhere in the world, another species made a financial payment mm -hmm. and, and participated in our economy mm -hmm. in a very small way. Mm. But if that is proved to be something useful, if, it, if it's proved to be technologically possible, mm -hmm. then history will look back and they will say, wow, you this began in Rwanda. Right. Yeah. And by the way, mm. but began with uh, funding and support and intellectual support and practical support of the taxpayers of Rwanda. Yeah. Of course, this money and all of the intellectual support coming from Ministry of Finance, yeah. Ministry of Technology, Rwanda Development Board, mm -hmm. which is cool, right? It is. It is cool. But uh, talk to me about, about the level of commitment from a financial perspective in terms of um, seeing this fully come to fruition. Uh, because, um, uh, you know, building such a, a, a groundbreaking uh, AI system that can be able to achieve what you, you, you've aspired to achieve uh, requires a lot of financial muscle. Yeah. And it's not also easy to achieve over a short period of time. Uh, maybe if you can talk to us about any groundbreaking milestones that uh, you've been able to hit so far with this, uh, you know, uh, uh, advancement. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we've hit all of the milestones that we wanted to hit in mm. year one. Mm. So, could you hold a digital identity? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hold a digital wallet? Can you build an AI which defines the simple tasks and actions? Mm -hmm. Yes, we mm -hmm. can do that. And our simple payments crossing the species divide and coming back here. Mm. Obviously, at this stage, you don't have uh, scale, you don't have all the proof points you need. But I think with the government of Rwanda uh, at the highest level, w uh, there is a common ambition to say, this is something uh, that is worth testing to 200, 300 million dollar level mm. in, in an open, transparent way. Yeah. If it's successful, it is an income stream for many people in Rwanda. It is a regenerative tool mm. Um, it, it, you know, where it's successful, it, I, I think it, when you apply it, it may not always be successful in all situations mm. for various reasons. Mm. But overall, you can build such a positive uh, model. And I have some experience here in Rwanda. This is like, I think the 20th year I've been coming to Rwanda. Mm. Um, I introduced personally uh, to the president, mm. the idea of drone delivery yes. of medicine yes. and yes. blood. And I remember very vividly the first conversation I had uh, with His Excellency uh, in the Davos World Economic Forum. He said, oh, you know, I thought drones were a military thing, yeah, yeah. dropping <laughs> things. And uh, I said, yeah, it's true, but they also can be doing other stuff. Yeah. So we came and we built that here in the... Rwanda and uh, with the, obviously the leadership of uh, American company Zipline. But it, it shows that in this country there is an appetite to think through things which are transformative. And I think there is an intellectual understanding in the government of Rwanda that in order for this country and for many other African countries mm. to prosper, the, the solutions were some of them will have to be new solutions. Mm, mm. They will have to be different solutions. Ones who want to try and find a way to engage young people who don't have jobs, who want to try and find a way to protect nature. When the rich countries in the north are not going to pay for that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, and then obviously we don't know, but we expect that climate change may be a further stress on yeah. the 
So I, nobody knows what the final outcome will be, but I really believe uh, that some core fundamental ambitions of this country are, you know, equity for poorer communities, you know, opportunity in poorer communities. Mm. It has a very strong ambition in artificial intelligence Correct. Yeah. and in data and in cloud computing. Mm. So really turn the beginnings of computer science knowledge and expertise into something which is which is of a continental class. Yeah. So you have guys from Stellenbosch or, or Rabat in Morocco saying, you know what, I'm going to come to Kigali yeah. because I'm coming to Kigali. And even guys from Rome or Paris yeah. say, I'm coming here because stuff is happening here. You know? Correct. It's, it's, it's a country that is a proof of concept country. Yes. Where you come, put your idea to the test, then you scale it. Uh, and, and, and you mentioned a very interesting, just, just on the aspect of, of the drone technology uh, that you just mentioned uh, earlier. And now we are looking at uh, the AI uh, coming in in this form. And I want to understand from a perspective of cultural uh, shifts. Uh, I know a lot is being said about AI uh, from the issues of ethics and all that. And I want to understand probably how easy or how difficult that is being for you with this, you know, uh, inter-species uh, uh, money concept. Uh, how, how easy or how difficult is, is, is this cultural shift, um, uh, uh, you know, standing either on the way or making it easier for you to deliver mm. this ambition? You know, I, I think if we look at the artificial intelligence as a friend, as a helper, uh, as a, a co-pilot, mm. if you will, mm. then we're in a really positive position. Mm. I, I mean, it, we don't need to get very technical here, but we can say that the AI model that we built mm. for this Tohanu interspecies money for the mountain gorillas, we tested it, and on the same time, we built a kind of wall, and behind the wall, we had all the human experts, mm. so the scientists, the veterinarians, the rangers, the trackers, the local community economists. Mm. We asked them the same question. What do you think simple interests of mountain gorillas are? You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we asked the AI. You know? What was amazing was, even though the AI is at the beginning of its journey, in the beginning of its evolution, it was already at a human level. And in some respects, it was even better than the human experts. Mm -hmm. And what that suggests to me is as we go forward, mm -hmm. and this is getting to your point of civilizational yes, shift, yes, yes. as we go forward, the AI will be better at directing the interests uh, and helping to take care of other species yeah. than humans have been to date. Because humans, we are beautiful species with so many beautiful things about us. Uh, I love our species, but we are not very good at paying attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I ask lots of people in this restaurant to go and look at a bat colony, really study bats, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And we'll minutes. be out of there. Yeah, and then they start looking at the Arsenal score and whatever, you know? Yeah. That's just the way humans are, you know? Yeah. But the AI can look intensely for a long period of time, and it can see patterns mm. and make connections which are hard for humans to make. Mm. Of course, in the end, it will be the local community, the local umze and, and the women's cooperative and the kids. It will be them who is doing the task, mm. but, the AI can help show them, mm. say, hey guys, if you do this, maybe you'll get some reward. If you do that, maybe you'll get some reward and then you'll feel better about yourself mm. as mm. well. Mm. Mm. I like the fact that you mentioned the, 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 the interconnection that we need to be able to have, especially with some of the tools that AI can support us or has that can support us in achieving what we're doing. Um, I, I want to understand, maybe if you can fill us in or, or, or allow us into the stage in terms of the interspecies money that you put together for the mountain gorillas here in Rwanda. Um, for someone who probably is wondering, how do I come in? How do I 
contribute? How do I be part of this? And 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 then maybe there are some uh, notes that you want to share for that. What, what? How can the community be part of this? Or someone who's watching us right now and probably says, "I'm miles away from the mountain gorillas, but I really want to be part of this." How do they jump in? Yeah, I would say to most of your viewers, mm. um, you are living beside nature. You can think about species which are around you. Uh, can be small animals, can be old growth trees, yeah. can even be insect colonies, mm -hmm. can be bats, can be birds. And you'd say, well, that's an interesting species. Well, I know it's in trouble. Maybe there's something we can do about it. You know? mm -hmm. Of course, here in Rwanda, we have many wonderful conservation NGOs. Yes. They're all already working. They have some expertise. What they don't have is consistent flow of revenue. Yeah. You know? So you, what you need to build is a system where money is flowing in, tasks are being asked for, date, data, information is being collected, the wheel is turning and turning and turning. So I would say to your viewers, if you are from town but you have a farm in the countryside, have a look around you, have a look, see have some thought, have some ideas. Like next year, we are very, very interested in doing projects on bats, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. We think that's a very important species, mm -hmm. um, different types of bats, particularly fruit bats. And then there are small animals. There are many, many other species. So mm -hmm. I would say just, and also just start to imagine, you know, because look, I'm middle-aged, maybe more than middle-aged, mm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I am not the one who is going to lift this, you know. Mm. It will be some very bright young people who are really get the idea, yeah. understand the technology, and say, I would like to participate. Yeah. I'd like to join, I would like, you know, uh, you know, I have some, these qualities, these qualifications, this. So you are really building something uh, which can sc start to scale, mm -hmm. start to really have a positive impact in the world. Everybody knows that there are a lot of challenges in the world today. You know? yeah. But people are really hungry for something which can be regenerative, Correct. something that can be positive. Yeah. Sustainable. Know? Something which helps with sustainability and really, yeah. and not it's not just about getting incentive. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a kind of Uber for nature model, right? Where you, you look at your Android phone and then they would say, oh, there's four tasks. If I do this task, if I take a video of this bat colony, let's say, then I get 20,000 francs, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just about that. Imagine you do that. And then you start to care about the bat colony. Yeah, yeah. You start to feel closer to it. You start to want to see that it survives. You start to see its beauty. You know? yeah, yeah. So it, it is, as you say, it's about better uh, coexistence. Better coexistence. If, if I may ask, just the procedure um, of um, how this is working. Um, so you just mentioned someone yeah. seeing a bat colony and taking a picture. Um, and they get uh, a reward, but you're saying we'd like you to do more than just that. Uh, maybe take us through the process uh, of, of, of actually engaging and interacting with the interspecies money uh, a, a value chain or ecosystem. Just share, share with us. Well, you know, to be clear, we're two years, maybe three years out from a platform which will exist in the market yeah. where you download the app, where, you, where communities can participate directly. We have a, a, a several <laughs> several more steps of testing mm. to go before we get to that point. But I do think you can easily envisage it like a Bolt, like an Uber, mm. uh, where you open it up and, and you, you are registered as a user. You can receive some education, you can uh, network within the app so that you're learning um, tasks and skills. And, and then you, as I say, incentivize to provide some very simple services. What we believe is that small pieces of data, small actions, if they are repeated again and again and again, 
can create something quite powerful. You know? mm. Mm. Um, so I, I think you just think of dividing a seemingly impossible task into millions of small, discrete mm. asks, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and then people are rewarded. And what I personally really am very passionate about and with my previous work in the drone uh, field, really, really care about uh, the village level, the small town level, these places that nobody knows the name of, no politician ever visits them, mm, mm. 60, 70 percent youth unemployment, you know, and they, they exist in the world. They deserve more opportunities mm. and they can be empowered mm, mm. to take control and to be incentivized. Yeah. And if we pull back out of Africa into the world and, you, and you, you'd say this earth is one entity, what do we want? And, and everybody on earth, what do we want earth to be mm. in the next century? What kind of life forms, what kind of species do we want to survive? Do we actually, we have lost 70% of our animal, yeah. wild animals yeah. in the last 40 years. Do we actually want to get to the next century where our grandchildren or great grandchildren and say, I'm, I'm sorry, we were, you know, these species, yes, it's true, they were here for millions and tens of millions of years, but, you know, we just didn't care. We were not interested. Mm. Do, yeah. do, you think, do you think those sounds of the drum beats of the need to fully conserve our environment and nature, are they being heard? Are they loud enough? Because you said we've I lost a lot. <laughs> you're a journalist. You're, you know, the, uh, positioning this uh, as an extinction play, as a dra drama play, as you should, you must, you will. Mm. I don't think that moves the heart. It, it does not move the investors mm. either. You mm. know? Mm. What is to say, hey, we have new tools, new technologies. We have all of these uh, people who want to participate. We have all of these communities that want to regenerate what is around them. They want to live in a flourishing environment. Yeah. We, we want to build a new and better future. What I believe, I, the other week I was in Abu Dhabi and I, I like Abu Dhabi, it's a very uh, futuristic place. Yeah. Um, but I was sitting on the terrace there and I saw a fly, just a little mm. fly. <laughs> it was the only living thing I saw in Abu Dhabi. You know? And I came back home to Africa and I think, you know, everybody says Africa is poor. And I think, no, Africa is rich, 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 rich in culture, rich in talent, but you know, rich in the soil, mm. rich in the insects, mm. you know, rich in the animals and, the, you know, and, and it, it's, that will be the superpower mm. for Africa, mm. right? Mm. You know, it, it's not going to be the grubby bits of Nairobi, which will make, uh, the world be excited about Africa with yeah. respect to Nairobi, which is the town I live in, but mm. no, it will be that we kept mm. not just the gorillas, but we kept all of that. So you go into the village and you hear the sound at yeah. night. Yeah. You know that sound? Yeah. You know, when you're home yeah. and, and you have that, 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 is, that is rich. It's wealthy and it's important. You know? It is, it is. Uh, before I let you go, I, I, I think I'm going to ask you on the aspect of scalability because you mentioned that, uh, uh, you alluded to it, uh, that there's need to scale. And, and for any new uh, uh, you know, innovation or any new concept, uh, you know, uh, developers always have these fears of, will, will this fly? Will this scale? And, and a lot of times there are challenges abound. Uh, What's your biggest fear for this specific project? And, and then what are you doing to, or how can we help? What sort of help do you need to, to, to see it succeed? I think there are two fears, Eugene. One, one is a fear which we'll see 
do humans care? Mm. Mm. Do we really care as a species? You know, uh, you know, we 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 expect the financial markets to deliver tens maybe hundreds of billions of dollars into mechanisms like Tehanu. Mm. Not just this one. This is an early example. There will be others, maybe slightly different technique, but similar principles. We expect that. We insist upon it. Mm. But perhaps the financial market will say, no, we like Premier League football, mm. Mm. but we don't actually like life on Earth. Mm. You know? Mm. Could be. So that's one fear. Mm. The second fear is we raise money, uh, it's very successful in Rwanda, it, elsewhere, uh, it gets to some scale, and then there are unintended consequences. Mm, mm. There are bad effects. Mm. You know, uh, one species over another species, uh, corruption, mm. crime, mm. you know, th that would be depressing. Mm. But those risks are not as important as not making that effort, that journey. Because what everybody agrees upon is that whatever the solutions are, they will be entirely new mm, mm. and different. Mm. And they have to happen at massive scale. Yeah, yeah. And they also have to happen, if not today, then certainly tomorrow. Right, right. So, that is the mindset that we are taking and of course it's a great joy to work here uh, with various ministers in the country you know uh, who actually have a similar ambition mm -hmm. they really see a vision they see a possibility we, we don't know whether we can succeed but we're going to try very very hard mm -hmm. and and i think already we are somewhat uh, lifted by the facts that Rwanda is not a, the poorest country anymore, but it's not a rich country. Mm. When you're out of Kigali, in the village, many people are just going to the fields with a hoe, mm. day after day, you know. But this country still had the ambition and the foresight to say, well, you know what, maybe we can look at this and from a different angle. Maybe we can help build something mm. different. Mm. So. I think it's a good news story. It is, it is, it is. If you look back on the drone, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, 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 for delivering of, of, of blood um, uh, 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 story, and, and, and you trace back to where we are at today, do you hold any sorts of regrets in terms of full implementation of the original vision? Mm. Or do you feel, I'm so proud of where we are with this ambition? It has actually even out, uh, outdone itself. What, where are you at with that thought? Oh, that's a good question. You know, it wasn't me that built the drones. Mm. It wasn't me that uh, built Zipline. You know, I was just inventing uh, the idea and, and, and making, uh, making the very first steps happen. Mm. You know? mm. uh, so, you know, you can say it's been a success. Mm. I know that there are women here in Rwanda and several other African countries would not be alive yeah. today yeah. if it wasn't for that. We know that the public health system has benefited quite considerably mm. from that. Mm. I know that the government has helped, uh, it has helped the government of Rwanda to attract new technology, new thinking. So this kind of shiny bit of Kigali yes. kind of is driven in part by that ambition. Yeah. But was it my original vision? My original vision was every small town in Rwanda is talking to each other, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there would be 50, 100 larger flights, you yeah. know, carrying larger stuff. I don't think we have that vision. So that's disappointing. Mm. And unfortunately, because of the war in Ukraine mm. and, uh, and the destruction in Gaza, uh, which is largely or significantly contributed to by drone technology, yeah, yeah. I, I don't imagine that, especially here in Africa, that military chiefs, intelligence chiefs, will sanction drone delivery mm. beyond emergency delivery, you mm. know, because they just, 
they say, well, you 20 kilos of of uh, goods uh, you want to put in the drone, but that could be 20 kilos of something else. Mm, you know? mm, mm. So uh, I'm over the long term, I imagine we will get where I want to go. But right now, I think it's uh, restricted to emergency delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's been a long day for you, and, and I think I'm being unfair asking you too many questions and taking this too long. So I want to end it at this. I want to ask you, uh, maybe where do you see the future, I know I don't want to make you a prophet. <laughs> but yeah, my wife does, definitely doesn't want to make me a prophet. <laughs> but I know you use technology a lot, AI a lot, so you're able to also read trends, you're also able to see, you know, where we are heading in terms of the use of technology and incorporating technology in conservation um, mm. and, 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 and supporting communities, like you said, passionately, rural communities. Uh, where do you see us uh, in the next, you know, 10, 5 years, 5 years, 10 years uh, to come? Specifically Rwanda? Yes, or, Rwanda, or, the region. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's this combination. So what I believe in is, um, you know when you make bread, you have yeast. Mm. It, yeast is a very small component in making a loaf of bread, you know. Yeah, yeah. But for me, the yeast that we need right now is a super advanced technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very small bit. The rest of it is the usual, Matashu, uh, annoying bank manager, you know, your, your church pastor, you know, it, it's like the real world, right? Mm. There's no magical Iron Man world, mm. but these this small bits of advanced technology. Mm. And what is important in the Rwandan context, with African context, is that, that a lot of that can be locally owned. Yeah. And then again with a drone, and not to criticize zipline, mm. but the value did not really, the most of the value did not accrue mm. to the communities, mm. right? Did not accrue. So what we want to see is that ambition, the realism that this stuff is only the yeast. Mm. Mm. It's only helping the loaf rise. Yeah. Not, not that we are, you know, I shouldn't say this in Kigali, but we're not, this is not Wakanda that we want, mm, right? Mm. We want Rwanda, mm, mm, <laughs> you know. Mm. Uh, so it's a balance there. It's a balance. Yeah. Thank you, John, for making the time. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for your time. Welcome. Keep shining, keep winning. We're here to support in every way that uh, we can. And uh, uh, enjoy uh, the rest of your uh, stay here in Kigali. Thank you very much, Eugene. Thank you. Thank it was you a so great much. pleasure. Right. Much appreciated. Time. Right.